ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ডে আছে
as well. So, so you see three affiliations there. Currently, I'm the director of the meeting, but I'm also in the director And you see a third affiliation is sexy. So, the who started this uh, center uh, some years back, and it's grown a very big uh, center. I'm very pleased about it. I will be visiting it uh, and tomorrow. Third affiliation started here six years ago. Now, this is very sexy. I feel like it's only to be that you will find it from my other people's daughter with the best of the So we have uh, a kept that tradition. So I hope uh, uh, you know the same that you will motivate you to take uh, care That's my intention. So you see beautiful pictures. I will come to first uh, uh, slides of where I'm coming from. So this is the place where I'm coming from, uh, Manora Peak, Nenital. Uh, that's uh, our old, uh, uh, you know, campus, but we have a new campus at Davisville, and it's a very, very beautiful place. I will show some pictures of that as well. So this is the campus at uh, Nainital. Uh, this is my office. Uh, these two windows. I see the beautiful, you know, Himalayas here. Not the Snow Peak Mountains, but we can see that from Davisville. The two the you know, the foothill. Uh, you can see the Kardudam railway station and the, uh, and in, the, in fact, the first year students are now staying in the hotel and uh, we have a daily shuttle bus. So this is a very old uh, campus, you know, more than uh, three years old. This is the telescope, which is uh, completing its 50 years of golden degree. Next uh, month, we have a celebration for that. So uh, this is a nice place to be. This is the telescope which I was talking about. One of the oldest in this country, which is fully functional. Huh? It is actually been responsible for a research paper last week. So, uh, so you know, often the, the workshop which we are going to organize is called What is the role of middle class telescope in today's modern era? Because you have big, big telescopes, you have, you know, satellite facilities and so on, but still the smaller telescopes, do they have any importance at all? So they do have, but we have to identify your research problem. Of course, exclusively from that telescope, you will not be able to do a quality paper, but you can complement and supplement. So that's the you know, kind of thing. Now, if you need to do a small telescope, you never know. There is one telescope here. You, but sometimes there is a uh, you know, follow up technology from here. But the backing process is required to be sophisticated. Cannot be that you observe something. That's enough. That's not enough, actually. So this is the telescope, uh, one of the oldest. Incidentally, this is the Carl Zeiss telescope. Three telescopes came in that time. One is uh, there in Kabul. More or less, it's not fully functional. One is in, the, uh, in Hyderabad, but that's not functional. So this is the only telescope. And probably one, it can be actually highlighted that you know, the old telescope, which are very mechanically driven, how we can modernize it in today's world in terms of operation. We can even think in terms of a robotic, you know, mode of operations and all that. It's really we're also very much interested to use such facilities. This is a small telescope again for solar observation, solar flares. And we're talking about it. It's H alpha 15 centimeter, uh, just to detect some transients called flares. This is our new campus, which was uh, currently the India's two largest uh, telescope. Uh, this is the nation's pride called 3.6 meter uh, Devasal optical telescope here. Uh, this is 1.3 meter telescope. This is exclusively for student soil. The only I need to It's not a fully open, but it collaborates with that. So it's 80% reserved for uh, and collaborators that way. This is a new facility which has come up uh, recently called Four Meter International Digital Middle Telescope. It's a very unique concept. I will talk about it a little bit more. We got our first light. That means you know the telescope was definitely into operation more. But here we know some of the calculations and other processes soon get over. Three months we are at this now in uh, in Malas. Unfortunately, at this time we have a lot of uh, clouds and rains which is uh, not so severe in higher up in the mountains in the Ladakh region. So we need to have to host uh, most of its telescopes in a place called Hanze.
and that doesn't get that much of it. So this region and some of the results which are coming from the 3.6 meter telescope is really, really world class. So there are two nature paper genus here from 3.6 telescope as well. Uh, this is the 1.3 meter telescope, which I was telling you is uh, our AD student's toy. And of course, you can see the Mala in the background. You name any mountain, Nanda Devi, Nanda Kaur, which you uh, can observe in the night and in the morning, you can have a cup of tea and what uh, beauty of the Himalayas from there. Um, it's primarily uh, looking at it as an imaging uh, you know, uh, instrument. A couple of uh, CCDs are there. Uh, still, we do not have a very good uh, spectrograph there. But the 3.6 meter telescope is equipped with all kinds of modern instruments. So, that is what is very, very essential for modern day astronomy. This is the uh, liquid mirror telescope which I was referring to. Uh, it is a quite unique concept. Basically, for telescope, either as a smaller telescope, you can have a lens or a mirror as a primary reflecting surface. But Bigger the size of the mirror, it is harder to maintain its stability and the size, you know, uh, even to manufacture the mirror somewhere, transport it all the way there and so on. So nowadays, single, uh, you know, dish mirror of larger and larger size is getting, you know, obsolete. People are talking about segmented mirror. That, you know, for PNP, which is a particular telescope project, it has uh, more than 200, you know, one. 1.5 meter size telescope. They will draw in the form of a hexagon and then the effective diameter will be 30 meters. Uh, so instead of say optical mirror surface, suppose you use mud and keep it in a bowl and now start rotating the bowl and it fixed the uh, velocity. Then you see that the market is a little bit over. No, that will form a perfect surface. Huh? Of course, they have to maintain the speed very, very accurately and so on. You know, to have an optimum, uh, you know, uh, weight and the volume of the market. Of course, what these advantages you can have turn the electrons. So it is always to be at a certain field of view, which is a more degree field of view. But it is a four meter telescope, right? So it, this is the primary uh, reflecting surface. And the parallel rays, you know the chassis grain configuration, huh? So there normally you have a reflecting, uh, you know, mirror at M2, and then you know the rays goes back to M1, and then there is a hole. That's a chassis grain uh, configuration. But here we don't have that because we can't make a hole in this. So directly at M2 you have the camera. So the camera is actually sitting in the top. So it's. At this point of time, you only have a you know, imaging instrument, but it is a very nice uh, way you can capture anything coming within this field of view. It can be your gamma ray burst, it can be a planet, it can be uh, you know, debris from a satellite. So different kind of objects will move into your plane of sight differently. So the characterization of all these millions of objects which are there in your field of view is that you made of artificial So this is a application for AI development. You know, so already we have actually a few programs with the Catherine Bessie. So we have started this in a very ordinary time. So the first thing that we need to do is the AI and the PS is a PhD because uh, the data management development and uh, you know, uh, all sorts of things are going on. Because what is important is you can be a discoverer. The idea is that you suddenly find something right in the sky, to be a gamma ray bird, to be a monitor in that sort Then you need to follow up that guy, right? Next door, you have the device that you can get to be equipped with, you know, how you do this spectrograph, you can get a camera, you can get a detector, you can get a spectrograph, you know? So immediately, you will be the first. Today, what happens is normally, you know, arguably, you will do a telegraph, how I see this thing in the sky, then I have to know that the network of telescopes. Uh, target that object. Yeah. <laughs> this is the fixed one because, as I said, you know, the, the pole cannot be uh, moved uh, this way. But you need the focal point. You're right. So, the, actually, as you ask the question, the focal is also trying to change. It's a temperature adjustment on the market. 
So there is a uh, you know, seeming possibility of the adjustment of the social media. But the uh, uh, field of view is changed. We cannot do the future. But all of this will pass at some point of time within that, you know, our style. Different seasons we have different objects as well. So if you know uh, uh, already some objects, you can practice. But if you suddenly discover something which is not known, which is not there in your catalog, then it will be a bit of a new So what I was trying to highlight is within the approach itself, we have some specific. And then of course it goes into maybe to what traveling or whatever to a network of friends across the globe or in the space of the city. And then you follow them. So this is the activity which is unique which will be only one in the flow for astronomical network. People use it for other purposes of events and the rest of the world. It's a very good point. Lens is a problem because in the 80 percent lens you have a more lens average diameter. You have to study it and you know, two lens versus three lens and all other different average So normally, uh, lens are not used for very big telescopes. Small telescopes, they very large, which is very long. But uh, bigger telescopes, most of the middle. But the cost of the middle of the this size is typically 10 times the cost of this size. It's more order of magnitude different than the uh, in terms of the cost. Good point, good point. Uh, so, six meter is a telescope for world made right now. So, not a big thing in the, in the mountain, but they found a double because it was in the mountain and then the snow and all that that created that. So, they have to stop the operation. And more recently, probably you are aware, Martin is not a very big So, that has uh, severe restrictions in the globe. So, uh, so these people, you know, put it uh, here many years back. So I was very, very worried about it. Uh, but then I had to, with all the other public sector, TV, so that they had plans, you know, uh, hundreds of people were only procured. So we had to do all the other things, you know, put in marks and so on. But once we set up it there, yeah, you see this person. Yes, yes. So when uh, the installation is done, and there is a thin mylar sheet also on the top of the market. Uh, because the monthly vapor also you have certain devices through which you can pass. Yeah. 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 For example, if you want to observe something, I would like to do it. And you are given one and a half hours for that. There are typically, you know, the success is 3 point six now. Like there are three and a half people uh, observing on the facing for promotion, and they're given, you know, one hour for 3 point six at any time. The time, amount of time you are given to go for an half hour, two hours for a time. So you do not take a continuous observing time to look at any object which is in its interior. So here I'm going to very fast moving points. So the moment you are observing, we are going to have so we have ten persons of different situation in time. Uh, suddenly, I uh, know uh, you can be observed. So, then that's the key that we be on this world about. So, this is where we have to be at the first. So, I don't think it's need that. Because the things of may not be continuous and object at all. I didn't say means you are only looking at two hours seconds in the sky. And here we are looking at four degrees. So, the, the success rate of capturing many unknown objects. You can see, so these are very, very high uh, set up for survey. Catalog, new object, intact sky, ocean survey. So the polar telescope also has a very good important survey. If you have good back in this room, you can put data pipeline. 
So the space programs are dedicated for PC now. No, no, they put the last layer and all that, you know, uh, uh, data production line, what are things that we did immediately after the launch. So, this is what is very important, and that's why this is a constant to be quite the minimum for this. Uh, but I mean, you do have to be able to use your work already for you know, similar kind of data and, and so on. So, these are international collaboration and content out of. This is uh, a Belgian, Canadian, Polish uh, you know, collaboration. Majority of the money was actually spent from Belgium, and uh, the Canadian uh, component is also going to be the hardware part and the top part of the uh, are going to be the But of course, this is the maintenance and the running process, sometimes more than you know, anything else. So that's what Aries will be primarily responsible for. Yeah. If you use that, we use certain devices, if I have a different use center in the Ultra are using the people that are ready. So, now I think you are typically, if you are using the very good one, that is the polarization property of the land. So, uh, you know, that might be. You know, we also have a polarization property. Then from the polarization property, you can take a sensor and it either from the source or the medium to like this part. So you can fix it that a very much the very important. Not this side. That that kind of doesn't exist. Uh even I do not know which side that we got to be the problem. Um so let me you are you are right. So the different uh, properties uh, have been studied. So what kind of property should be? At what speed it should uh, be located? What should be the environment to which it will be actually on the other start to grow the entire thing? So nobody goes into the building and power. Operation happens from the time to that can also be good. There's the air flow or that. So, I guess this is very well studied. Uh, and for that, the uh, calculation is really very important. And uh, if there are, uh, as you were, as many if there are that or other combination of the power, yes, that also gives me a problem. In fact, this is not an exception. The amount of the amount of the calculation was actually less. So, it would have taken up the. That and that actually really the project from the amount of market which we first, uh, once that thing was in and then a market material, what was the big story? That's why I have to be, I think, 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 Actually, quite the task, even though know, originally the market was supposed to come from Ukraine and then you know, all these you know, problems are there. Who will sell this high quality micro? It is also the problem. It is there, it's not a good slide, so we have to start in a town. So, yeah, so the uh, the so was made operational in uh, April. That's yeah. the problem. All the work will be started here. So, October 16th, uh, uh, you know. So this should be a very efficient place for one of the amount of people to other questions. So I would like to make this uh, open to community uh, by the language. And this kind of data is actually part of my data is interesting that I end up sending it to the data also. You know, I find what we can do. And I would like to, uh, you know, most of the projects which is coming in India has been maybe open to testimony. Absolutely. There are a lot of interesting from, uh, from colleagues from us. I must have pointed out. But uh, this is not that today, modern day, it's just not that. So we'd like to uh, you know, uh, we can be able to you know, the one that is open uh, running the internet program that. So there will be some data which will be public, you know, in the PDF for the UD as well. Data has to be and so people like you, you know, who go and enter the university sector, students who are interested in this kind of thing, the past is busy. You can have your own ideas how to look at the data and do some you know projects. 
So this is the 3.6 meter Davis cell optical telescope. Nation's pride. I should have a human being somewhere here. Uh, you know, not in the picture. It's a mammoth size. Really, really gigantic in my opinion. But the challenge is in terms of mechanical capability, building. It's amazing. I mean, it's unbelievable almost. Okay, so I gave an introduction to Manita for the last 20 minutes. Now I get into uh, my art, the sun. So you see, there is a movie from the uh, you know solar dynamic observatory which is showing a part of the atmosphere of the sun. There are regions in the sun where you have this kind of bright locations where a lot of bright emission is coming. There are comparatively something uh, which is darker. Traditionally, these regions used to be called quiet regions, and these used to be called active regions. But I will show you that there is nothing quiet in the sun. Um, so the sun, like all stars, is a very dynamic star, always active, always changing. The more we learn about it, why do we need to study the sun? Then it's very one of the oldest subjects people have been, you know, uh, at least looking at it and observing it for like 400 years. For me, actually, the main attraction, it's a, it's a fantastic laboratory for plasma physics. You name any branch of physics, you are on the same So again, you know, I have no clue about and the, the island is like the physics is the thing. I will not select anything. Yeah. Nice. That's a real thing. I will select anything with that. And I have no clue about what to do. Uh, with that thing. Just, you know, two big presentations, right? <laughs> but I know feel that the form also is nice. Which a lot of people don't know. It's interesting that I think that the form is to come. So we push the There are two things that we can do with that. So, so it's accidental that I came into that. But then I have to choose, you know what? I mean, how do you support it? Because it's a big concept, you know, it's part of the sutta in India. So, of course, Ornoda was one of the people who did that. He was looking at, you know, the leading transfer and plasma and HD and so on. That motivated me, definitely that motivated me. And I found that astrophysics is nothing but terrible. Application of different branches of it. So you should, uh, you know, see, there is a particular dichotomy. Sometimes you can get something with astronomy, and then, you know, then I have no clue until I'm getting into there. If somebody says, you know, it could speak the family. Even the parents, because I'm not the president of the Astronomy of Sudhakarya, I don't know if it's kind of a But the point is, Tell us which are the people who are doing it. Some people are, you know, from the China, we are fascinated by the United Actually, like, to be honest, first question that when I went to the UK, I said, I'm from Africa. So, after you see how much that's. So, rather than just asking about anything about the star. Just we start with the time body. <laughs> so time body they have to do only if you have like three minutes. Then of course they ask what the temperature of the sky is that that that. So it is a planet the physics. There is no you know nothing else to need. Where the things you can you can learn during your class. Very good. So actually, the only thing that we have done is that we have to do economics. So we are going to do well. And our perspective of the life is that we are going to do well. And 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 we are going to do well. Really, it's a fantastic question of lectures. He was called as by the way. He didn't teach him from his mind. So, uh, of course, people have different interests if you can choose him. But from this is that you, you know, whatever your, uh, you know, loving areas are, whether it be atomic physics, whether it be nuclear physics, you can find his, uh, you know, application. So, even just in the sun, it itself is there. So forget about your research. That's what I think that uh, in UNSCO, that's the beauty actually in terms of astronomy. So if I just take up one more thing, I need three lectures actually. 
for each uh, subject area. How solar with pixel files, you know, uh, given our understanding of, you know, for single, you know, about the solar you know, problem issues and all this, every aspect of the different uh, experiments, it's experimental, and then a number of uh, things like that. Okay, so coming back to sun, these are called acting regions. And as you see here, now we understand that there are kind of, you know, magnetic structures in the form of loops. They are combining the plasma here, but because of certain instabilities, which is driven probably, sometimes these acting regions they explode and amount of material are thrown into interplanetary space. Good amount is also or sometimes falling back. And as you see, when they fall back, again, there is a lot of activity happening, brightening there and all that. So we, have, we follow all this. But what I will be briefly talking about today, probably more focusing on this, you know, uh, these guys when they are expelled into the interplanetary space, how they behave and all that. Now the question is, what are these active regions? These are again uh, called sunspots. They're very strong concentrated magnetic field regions. And now we understand these magnetic structures are formed in the form of these magnetic field lines or magnetic flux tubes, and they come from underneath the surface. They come always, you know, the sunspots are in, in pairs in, in terms of the polarity. And then you see because of the, you know, some kind of interaction that, you know, uh, that huge brightening you saw. And then a huge amount of experiment for the space. So when the lines are tangled and break apart, they're creators of the solar storm. So this is what is the source of these highly energetic particles and mass thrown into the interplanetary space. Other very interesting aspect is, I would like to highlight is the multi energy particles. See, if you want to do astronomy today, uh, any branch we talk about, you really have to look at it from different ways. Because most of the astronomical objects, they emit in many different wavelengths, from short to X-rays or gamma rays, all the way to the radio wavelength. So it is important to Combine the data as collected from the ground based observations and the space based observations. As you know, the sort of the wavelengths you cannot see thankfully from the ground because of the uh, their perspective or something like that. Um, so modern day and actually solar physics has done really in a remarkable job uh, almost uh, several decades back because of this multi wavelength approach. When I said this, my TV that that's the time when they say, you know, dedicated observatories were there, dedicated UV observatories were there. Soho was launched in 1995. So I, my first photo was the Soho. I'm sure 20 years it is in the Lagrangian one point. And, you know, it has 13 instruments on board with all kinds of possible imaging and spectrographs and, and, and so forth. So the multiple aspect is very, very important. And, you know, multi-wavelength as we can say that for observation alone, because the emission process is also driven by some physics. So you have to understand the physical processes which are responsible for that. They don't even give us time. Incidentally, having said all this, uh, in my PhD was the only job created. In fact, my first paper when we wrote to MJ, uh, is it is all right, uh, not a but here you know, and we apply it. By the way, the words you have to do is answer. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 He was a governor at that project. He was uh, the governor of that project. So, Susidat, uh, so, uh, I think you said, you know what is a sunspot, huh? Different sizes of sunspot. So, what's the different sizes? What is your key? Lambda versus that. You are very loud. Let's come from. I think of that. So, I will think that. That was the observation in October 19th. And I do more observations now than I'm doing. And then you will then see in the heading of this for every part to the observation that I saw. So, the point is people have to evolve with that because we realize that's also something important as well. And I'm probably doing more important than today than giving it by all the science. I don't know what you want to say. But the point is, there is hardly a different way of observation to be in the astronomy. This is also a very important aspect which is given to Because if you do only survey, you're not survive. If you do only observation, you're not. You have to combine you know, uh, observation with data, 
They are all around with some bad, including the bad side. So it's never worth that. I mean, uh, Shikwa had done an observation to me, but I don't think he didn't manage to work with AIDS. And we can make an idea of doing theory, but I don't think he has Yeah. And she had a paper like this, you know, he had a master's in the years ago. Okay, so coming back to the sun, so what I am showing here is the same active regions. You see, when you are looking at in the white light, this you know, uh, visible light what you can see from the ground based uh, telescope, you see it is a movie, few days of uh, you know, as the sun rotates, the sunspots are coming more looking towards us. But if I now take it in a extreme ultraviolet, this is a 171 astronomy, looking at typically 2,000 kilometers from the surface of the sun. And this is about 1,500 kilometers, you know, in three or, three or four astronomy, which is representing the chromosphere. I guess some of you are aware that there are different layers that the sun. The visible surface is called the photosphere, and then you have the chromosphere, uh, and then the corona. Which is out almost not the virus corona, but I will talk about that story as well. <laughs> How the name came in. <laughs> so the point is that the same active region we are now looking at and monitoring in every second. It's every second from multiple vantage points. Then only you can understand these uh, objects. So these are more uh, um, examples of uh, storms at the at their source. So here you see that there's again an active region. The magnetic forces of our sunspot become tangled and break apart. Violent storms can burst into the sun uh, from the sun. This is the main source of our strongest space weather event. So this is a new subject you can remark in recent years. This is called space weather. It's very similar to when you know the boatman Mahindra the Punjab, the the radio so are they trying to make the the three decisions that are falling out and uh, finding out the same blocks that are there? And if you are not doing that, like SpaceX has not uh, concentrated or focused with the uh, astronomy, they lost the forty cells just two days after the launch because there was a big solar storm that changed not directly impacted the surface, but you know the trajectory of the big blocks get get hampered because of the change in the environment. Um, uh, atmosphere. So here you also you see at the end of this movie there were these kind of white uh, you know sticky uh, things which flooded the uh, camera which is uh, situated. This is taken from uh, from one of the uh, satellites. I mean it's the Soho uh, image actually. These are very old images, but still fantastic uh, demonstration that how uh, if you are there in space and you can actually particles come out and you can affect your cameras and so on. So uh, the solar flares are very quick, intense, but smaller explosive, uh, you know, explosions and coronal mass ejections. I will show you more examples of coronal mass ejections. So they appear as bright flashes, sometimes followed by a burst of high energy particles that can travel half the speed of the light. And the snow, as I already you know, told you before, is uh, from the storm hitting the spacecraft here. Again, this is an example showing that we follow or we study all these objects or uh, flares, uh, you know, in multiple wavelengths. So this is a 171 angstrom, which is representing a corona. Uh, you know, here you see this explosion and this material going out. But of course, uh, what the Bindu does, you know, why can we give there in the first place? That we have to understand. That can be only understood if you understand the physical environment of this, because these are high, uh, you know, temperature plasma in some kind of uh, equilibrium. But this equilibrium is getting disturbed because of certain motions or magnetic configuration changes. And all this is by magnetic or magneto hydrodynamics. I'm not going to be really part of it. Uh, my PhD debate is here. If that means it's all based on those equations, we have written that. And still, we are asking the same equations to our students. <laughs> 
that way this is going to have so as the given point is things are actually not more and no two guys have seen no two players have seen there is so much of variation in terms of these uh, environments and their language their topology their, their physical conditions so you need to understand the thermodynamics properly you need to understand the we have, you know, they are in high temperature, so they are not in normal state, but they are all in plasma state. So they have to have non equilibrium activities, you know, cyclone So you need to do the domain of the plasma You can incorporate all these things with the domain of the not the best. You can only solve certain situations. So many people in this world that don't understand that you are involved in the planet is So that way, I think you know, artificial intelligence is becoming uh, you know, quite popular and successful to some extent because there are causal, you know, relations which uh, basically is governed by some current physical processes. So if you can have see 100 different kinds of possibilities, uh, 100 uh, parallel uh, parallel extensions of human involvement are possible. So the AI is to do something. And that causes the relationship, although there are probably sometimes in physical relationship, then the way I think the physical approaches are allowing you can simply mention these guys are coming, you know, all the way. When you reach us or something kind of like the skill, that's the model. That's what you know they do that. So the space is a very significant end of so, so the CMEs are large storms that burst out, cloud a billion tons of particles at over a million kilometer per hour. Several ones can occur almost any day. And then again, sun becomes magnetically very active at certain times. And then there are certain times, sun is not so magnetically active. Not talk about today. I guess uh, we will be talking about it in the afternoon. So I don't know if we But probably the sources of the Cycles and so on. Because there are a lot of similarities in the magnetic field origin in uh, our heart and in our and the sun. Different type of dynamo, but I guess you know you will if you are attending this talk, you will find some more insight of that. So these are called the coronal mass ejections, and as you can see from a three images, see when this bright thing will happen, what are the different time scales, what are the variability time scales are very different in different circumstances. So to model them is, is quite challenging, but we still like them, and we'll continue doing that. So uh, this is the environment where we go, uh, called the space weather. This is uh, uh, for, uh, you know images taken from a studio spacecraft, and you see it's not a very pleasant environment to uh, roam around. Uh, so it is actually a big concern. If rich guys are trying to go to some other planet for some uh, you know, habitation and so on. And they will give a lot of money for their position to us to predict uh, this is where the shields that go out and so on pay for. <laughs> so this is really becoming important. I mean, that's so far there are a number of uh, situations where the space that has been there. I mean, the space there, our our uh, transmission line communication system are not giving a full talk on the space weather, but this is a very, very important area of concern now. Um, so what I'm also trying to highlight is how it is important to collect data from different sources. And so here is the example. See, uh, this is where the sun, you know, the CNEs are coming out. We are uh, looking at very close to the sun, lower corona. Then we are stitching two different, uh, you know, uh, images from two coronagraph instruments. Coronagraph instruments are creating artificial total solar eclipse. This is the solar corona. You cannot see in the day, uh, you know, daytime. Only during the total solar eclipse, the moon blocks the solar disk because the solar disk is rising one million times brighter than the corona. So, unless you perfectly block the solar disk, you will not see any photon coming from the corona at all. So, corona graph does that. Artificially, we go to space, we block the solar disk, and then you can see the you know, outer corona beams or emissions. So here, these are the coronagraph, two uh, coronagraph images. This is previous three images. We are looking at the ray from the sun as these guys are uh, traveling across all the way to our planetary systems, and then we tell you this is the right. So this is 
actually a very, very important that no single satellite will be able to motivate the activity of the satellite. So we need multiple vantage points. The other very important aspect is this is the in the plane of the sky. So there is no 3D information here. So if you want the 3D information here, you really have to go to two different points of the vantage point and we wait three years from here. And then we can construct it, get the real velocity of these guys as we say. Yeah. Yeah. So that again will not be able to be calculated from here. So you need a separate probe which will be placed at Lagrangian one point and other location, you know, like total by the part of solar probe is going much closer to the sun and all that. So at different point, in situ you are measuring the pitch. Ah, so this is combined with what they're showing is the solar wind, uh, you know, density, its variation is happening because of the, uh, you know, uh, transversal of these guys. So sometimes if something is, suppose the solar wind is moving into the 300 kilometer per and then somewhere is coming into 100, 200 kilometer per day, slowly it will be caught up by the solar wind. But if something is coming out say at 1000 kilometer per day, it will actually push the solar wind. And that's what is happening here, actually. So the solar wind is actually being pushed. It's like, you know, so now you have to put it over like the fourth time. You can put it in here. Ah, it's not a little bit. For it, you can show them on the upper end of the city of the country. You can show them on the upper end of the city. You can show them on the upper end of the city. You can show them on the upper end of the city. You have to background here, so you can actually go in each other. The sun actually is already expanding its outer and uh, you know atmosphere also, and there's a continuous motion of particles out of the sun. So this is called the solar wind, it's like a biome. So if I most definitely need to have a project and put it. For a project, I can have a direction of bio to see the solar cycle. Bio to see the solar cycle. Bio to see the solar cycle. Bio to see the solar cycle at different phases and different latitudes also. Things are not so uh, you know straightforward, but that makes life also very interesting. No, this is real observation. So this this is observation from a stereo spectrum. Then the data and the time is also here. Stereo have uh so it is constant which was a twin campaign of satellite, and the way it was lost that the magnetic point will change. As it looks to the sun. And uh, so each satellite has uh, images, which that image is given here. Then it has uh, two coronal graphs, four one and four two. And then it, it has shown video to the images as well. So this image is actually taken from a single uh, satellite, uh, CDOA. But similar instrument is there in CDO video. And then the information from CDOA and is combined to do the video. So there are different ways of doing this video be as well because. It's not easy because if you are uh, recording a solid object and seeing it from there and there, it's much easier to record that. But this object is scattered. Is so then it is much important to know what is the density is actually here. And well, that is much more complicated. But that makes it interesting as well. Um, so the solar influence, uh, so thankfully, Earth has its own magnetic field. And since the solar wind is coming from there, it does, you know, completely change the, the magnetic lines of Earth, and typically it is like this. But again, sometimes you know the particles will try to penetrate from the polar region, so there will be the aurora boreal. If you have a lot of water, this guy can get ruptured, and then the many more space weather, uh, you know, uh, events will happen. There are certain things which happens in the in the backside of the Earth as well, not the sun facing side. This is all. Uh, geo, uh, you know, space environment people say, I don't know research for a time, which will be really Interestingly, there is an, I, I, one thing I didn't mention too much. So even if you do the solar prediction, from the interior to all the way to the interior, the order of magnitude of changes of the density and the spatial scales are changing by seven dollars of magnitude. The density uh, interior at the sun and then you go to the atmosphere. And so obviously, you can understand. That the same physics cannot be applied. So you can do the same thing for a subject like that. You will be near for a lot. You will be near for a lot. 
if it is that the MNC is a special circumstances of plasma physics, we can have to be individual particles in it or after the electrons and protons in the synthesis, it's a single fluid system. So, on fluid equations, we have to take fluid equations. I have to take the book, which I'm not sure if you have to call it. So, then it will get great. And then there is the potential of you know some of the particles to you know penetrate deeper. Having said that, they cannot penetrate all the way to the low latitude. So imagine what happens is that the particles are guiding along the magnetic field lines, and then they will try to enter through the higher latitude. So in the higher latitude, that is going to happen. Ah, he is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So they have all these you know, instruments which detect this uh, stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because the after the first time, it's the after. So, yeah, this is the So, I think the proposal is this vector. So, what is the database? We have to give the index to the data from Mapway. So, the magnitude of 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 the so uh arakta chotto uh, example dakha de pari so for quite some of the this is a question in the where is the operation of the sun? Because the Dakano change a quiet sun, the 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 and these small flux tubes, when they interact with each other, there is a flux cancellation. There is something in the process of magnetic interaction that is not possible to find, which converts whatever magnetic energy is stored into the form of heat energy. So here you see that these magnetic reconnections are responsible for the generation of these kind of jet fly structures in the chromosphere, which is about 10 to 100 kilometers above the surface. This is the photospheric behavior, and you see there are a lot of flows and so on, right? Because there are convection on the surface of the sun. Because if you go to the majority of the mainstream stars are convective underneath. So, this is the exact uh, you know, manifestation of the convective style. So, you see here, and because of the convective motions and additional uh, you know, instabilities, you know, these guys are forced to connect with each other, which normally they will try to avoid. And then that produces these kind of uh, jets, and that jets. Travel to all the way to uh, higher atmosphere. This is the image taken from solar panels. Obviously, these three uh, slices are from ground. While saying this, showing these examples are these are combined data from Big Bang Solar Observatory, the ground based facility, and this is a solar dynamic observatory in the NASA facility. This work is led by my former student, Thomas, who is back in India now as a faculty in IA. And uh, uh, you know, guys from all over the world. China, Europe, America. Point is that collaboration is the key point. The people have different expertise, there is no harm in you know combining and and trying to look at you know these problems. And of course, that only allows you to publish in a quality journal like Science uh, as well. What do you want to say? Firstly, you want to talk about it. What do you want to say? Okay, let me see because I I've been talking too much. So Aditya is very well. But actually, Kano has been just shaking like our friend. Actually, the other guy is like that. So some people are saying Kano has been just because of our lifestyle and our kind of interest and so on. So this is a multi-institutional project. It's the half million dollar project. It's a making India <laughs> so, so you can name it. Uh, the good thing is, majority of the college students for that matter are being um, done in different laboratories across India. Some are in the research institutes, some are in the 
in the Israel laboratory, but the scientists are there from all over the country. Like Divindu is uh, you know, also involved with the science working group. I am on behalf of the science working group presenting this or describing this to you. So I won't have time to go through all the you know uh, members or guys who are in, uh, deeply involved. I will list out the seven payloads. We call it instrument of the payload for space submission. Uh, here, the the biggest guy is this uh, Corona graph. As I was mentioning, the Corona graph is a device to block the solar disk. It has a capability of uh, you know looking at this uh, inner Corona particularly three visible and one infrared channels. It has also a uh, spectral polarimetry capability. Uh, in fact, we debated whether the can be uh, in this case. Uh, Bill was uh, describing that. But uh, it, there are a lot of challenges of you know, its uh, functionality in the space environment under the conditions and so on. Having said that, I think that we can get so there is a standard grading, you know, I'm sure most of you have done experiments of grading at different orders and so on and so forth. So we will be using a traditional grading for the purpose. Then there is a, a suit instrument, which is a near UV instrument. Uh -huh. This is uh, being done privately in an IIA, I mean, assembled in IIA's lab. Uh, this is a near UV uh, imaging telescope, which is done by Ayuka and ISRO uh, at a Good collaboration. Then we have uh, two particle detectors. We are going to Lagrangian one point. I think just tell what is the Lagrangian one point. It's one lakh twenty seven thousand kilometers away from us. It's a long journey. Uh, it's only ESA and NASA who have been able to reach up to L one. Yeah. So if you are aware, there are five satellites, right? Then we go to. So Lagrangian one is a location between between the sun and the earth. So if you want to observe continuously the sun, L1 becomes an ideal situation because anything coming from the, uh, from the sun towards us has to pass through the sun. So it's a good uh, vantage point for uh, you know things of big weather and relevant. You have heard about uh, the WSB, which is energy, right? So this, one to avoid the other side, right? the other side. Then of course there are four and five. There is four and five for for uh, solar materials, but they are still and uh, elementary will be even more than like, you know, farther you go, your data what you can connect from that uh, satellite will be even more than. So you will be able to download only when you be, you know. Small amount of data that means you will sacrifice some capacity, right? So, all these combinations make Silicon in a very good position for solar. Uh, and uh, so, if you are at L1, you ideally should look at the sun continuously with the remote sensing instrument. So, these are called remote sensing instruments the coronagraph, the images, the chronometers, and then you should have particle detection. So, when the particles that are coming from the sun, so we need to so detect those particles, their characteristic properties, what kind of charges they have, what kind of magnetic field they have. So you should have a combination of uh, particle detectors and the magnetometer, which is here, which is also built by uh, ISRO centers. And these are the two, you know, X-ray spectrometers. The sun, whenever there is a huge explosion and it's there, and all that it emits sort of X-ray, and that allows you to learn plasma diagnostics. So spectrometers are used for won't be getting part of physical detection. It makes it a little They look nice. So you want to do this, you need to know the speed, you need to know its uh, temperature, you need to know its dimension scale. So, uh, so for a real astrophysics, you really need to use spectrum. So you guys will try that you need to learn about it, the spectrum of it, that's another reason. And the other reason that I will try to do is try to read from the spectrum. Immediately, we have to combine what that really the Tells you why you are looking at it, because the spectra, you don't know where you are looking at, what the uh, dynamical change is happening, and so on. So, this is the different uh, instruments on uh, Aditya. This is the big elephant sitting on the top deck, this is the chronograph, about 170 kg elephant. And then the suit instrument is uh, about 35 kg. 
uh, sitting next to it uh, at the top deck, and then all these other X-ray spectrometers and so on are sitting there. So this is what is uh, uh, is uh, Lagrangian one point. So we will make some uh, uh, round round and then go uh, like reach. So essentially, we don't sit in one point in any case. Around the Lagrangian point, you will be actually making a huge electrical object. But once you reach a Lagrangian point in that vicinity, essentially, you need only very little fuel to be there. Because very, uh, roughly, the force between the satellite and the Earth is balanced by the force between the Sun and the satellite. So uh, all the way uh, going there, this is called the, you know, the, the cruise phase and so on. Once you are inserted in the halo orbit, after that, you will need to spend that on the fuel. That the reason Soho uh, satellite was uh, mentioning was launched in 1995. Still, it's operation. Of course, some of the instruments have, you know, phased out over you know, 20 years in space advancement, you cannot survive. But there's still quite a few things which still work, and we use the data. Um, I think I have to skip a few slides. So, this is the field of view which we'll be looking at. Let me just uh, skip. Uh, because I had too many slides. Uh, okay, so yes, maybe one simple thing which we are looking at. Okay, so most of the coronavirus which you have shown earlier or in the space is uh, avoiding the very close to the solar disk. Because there are challenges. The moment you go very close to the solar disk, you have a challenge. You can think about it. So this has been a huge, huge challenge. So here, this is an example that if you plot the height time plot of a CAD, that means, you know, as the CAD propagates in the interplanetary space, these are data points. And then from the height time plot, you take a derivative of that, you get the velocity profile, and then you get the energy with the accelerator. In the particular system of the gravity, my current of the we say, take your accelerator for the value of the accelerator. For a chain accelerator portion and accelerator portion, the power of the arrival and the calculation. So here you see all the data points are actually absent but in the early phase of the series. So now this information flows the sun quite a deep. That's the main challenge which has been over the years. So this is the guy area. In fact, there was a coronagraph on Soho, but unfortunately there was a disconnect. In that process, actually, the C1 coronavirus thing was an act incidentally inside the spirit. Then for some kind of polarization measurement, and it never survived. So C1 was lost primarily because of that. Uh, uh, so we don't have data onto these regions. So after uh, stereo was launched, so what we did, we have done some calculation for the UV imager and the coronagraphic imager to fill up some of these things. So this is actually some of the work which my, my students and she can get you data point, but she get the problem with the UV imager. Imager, the emission mechanism of the calibrator. And coronagraphic imager is that they have to come from calibrator. She can get a different mechanism for the density dependence is different. Here it is a density square and the density here. So obviously, you may not be following the same animal. It doesn't mean the image that it shows, it amount of the body, the ceiling is going to be the ceiling is going to be structured. The same structure is going to be the same structure. So that you will immediately have a coronavirus of the beach. The ambient is going to be. We need a coronavirus to the very close to the sun. And as you can see here, image Green portion is the coronagraph image, and the uh, orange is the image uh, portion. So there is a big gap in this uh, you know, portion, which is, we are missing. So another instrument, uh, you know, target uh, 
আমার ছাত্র কিছু কিছু জিনিস কাজ করার চেষ্টা করছে availability of coronagraphic uh, data here this is the last part i would like to highlight is what i was talking about is this magnetic field measurements in again neighborhoods and so on through spectrophotometry and all that but now what is the global pattern is that we can understand that i am going to say that dipolar the polar polar region is in the zone of the monosphere so the it again uh, is a prediction of uh, solar eclipse we made from within this group here what is the magnetic structure of the corona on mars because that also changes you know over the time that really really dramatically things i have skipped this uh, you know uh, slide uh, so almost on a daily basis you need to reproduce this global magnetic field structure because the ceiling also has to go through this magnetic structure as well it's not going to be the magnetic field man it's just not a solar wind and all solar wind and the magnetic field structure in the ground so this is again a further complications so this is something which theoretically uh, they are doing i will have to skip uh, some of this stuff they are also doing some stuff uh, i think jaina to me i will dakha bhi dena eta satellite that i mean the wind that the other planetary environment amra khali arthe kothai bhabi কিন্তু অন্য প্ল্যানেটে কেন বসবাস করা সম্ভব নয় বা কতটুকু সম্ভব কিনা উইল লট ডিপেন্ড অন দা নো ম্যাগনেটিক এনवायरमेंट অফ দিস গাইস এন্ড when this guys can uh, uh, these are the effects of the talking to the back side so this is all uh, you know work in progress i want to point out one element uh, that has been successful in recent times we have set up a aditya l1 sign support cell in that area uh, target is university so we will be holding workshops tenure workshop at the is once a year three for three to four days workshop at different parts of india hmm? primarily for pgc kintu ei 10 diner je workshop ta hobe seta is for uh, master student the idea is jara institute ta banache they know about you know what to do but it has to go beyond that and as i was saying that you know we really want the aditya data to be in the public domain as soon as possible but even if you make it in the public domain how much people will be able to work on this data they should know how to analyze the data and what you know instrument limitations are and so on so astrosat has similar support cell in ayurveda dipankar da was uh, another dipankar what a charity uh dipankar da was uh, heading and uh, that has allowed i think the people i do not know that uh, you know the community whether you are right so taking the same concept we are doing even before the law that so that only issue is uh, started much later and people were still not familiar with you know data pipeline and so on you know i mean actually seven year of us that uh, we be happening you are going this so um, so we want to start the early phase so that you know uh, we can build this to the community we can you know because once the students get trained uh, and of course first they have to motivate it why they need to do, uh, look at our uh, data for the first place they have to be interested in solar physics so all these things we want to do it we will also primarily give uh, uh, later on remote access to because you know solar data is a really large much larger than any other data for that matter and it needs a uh, good computing resources as well so we will set up data centers and all that that uh, area and uh, we will host the students and once you get a little bit of familiarity you should be able to get remote access to look at the data that's the uh, plan for all this um so the future lies with uh, with these uh, people a small bunch of uh, dipu gang uh, this is a larger uh, bunch so this is a workshop which we had uh, just one and a half months back at uh, nanital so um, i don't recall anybody from present but we see a very ashin bhai yeah 
Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, we have to advertise it a little more. The next one is going to come up in uh, in uh, Mangalore, Manipal University. The uh, February one will be in ILB PSU. You can actually vote uh, if you are interested. I'll be happy to come here and uh, make the report. So, uh, you see, local interest has to be there to make a workshop. So, definitely, Kolkata is in my eye for one of the next uh, workshops. Uh, and we'll do that. So, once a year, it will, it will happen. Once a year, it will definitely happen. So, this is my latest, uh, uh, you know, group. Some particles have escaped. This guy has gone to Boulder. This guy has gone to Boulder. This fellow has just defended his last week. Uh, so, it happens. Shatabdo will be probably also... So there is a Gaussian, it looks like you can fit in here. <laughs> so these are uh, somewhat, I had a criticism that I didn't have uh, many girl students. So now you can see, I think I have um, uh, 15 by that. Uh, of course, this is my old girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I'm really, really looking forward to, to work with all of you guys. But my main, main point is you should be able to enjoy uh, life. And that's what I do. I guess you can identify me. I guess depends on which just me. So I, I do other things also in life. Huh? Uh, and I want to sometimes get out of my related scheme and be allowed to walk with the uh, chapel. <laughs> so uh, it's another very important that you know uh, any of the scheme now. <laughs> now on my own. <laughs> and so the uh, that part is something that is so I get I made yeah. And things are available these days it's much much easier. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So for a change, you know, <laughs> for a change. So that's the view from uh, neighbors, sir. So you're most welcome to visit us. Just to plan for it, and we'll be happy to go. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Whole as perfect as the other as the market. Okay, so, 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 so,